Welcome to another episode of SOLIDWORKS for Creo Parametric Users. In this video, we're going to take a look at six things to know about assembly modeling in SOLIDWORKS. First thing, mates. I've covered mates in a few other videos, and mates are a little bit different than constraints in Creo Parametric. In Creo, when you are assembling a component, you define the constraints that locate that component in the assembly. So you are assembling it to components that already are placed into the assembly. In SOLIDWORKS, mates are more like assembly level features and you insert the components and then you define the mates. Let's take a look at an example. I will choose insert components and here I have an open document for a bolt. I will select it and then just drop it here in the model. So now we've got the bolt located in here. In order to define where I want it to be placed, then we will add mates. I will click on the mate command and it opens up the property manager. Let me select a cylindrical surface here and then another cylindrical surface and it's moving the component over and it is suggesting a concentric constraint, excuse me, a concentric mate. Let me hit the check mark in the little toolbar in order to place it. Let me grab it and move it up just to facilitate defining the second mate. I will select this surface and let me rotate the model so I can get to the other surface that I want. And we are getting a suggestion of a coincident mate. That's good. Let me hit the check mark. And those are all the ones that I will define for this component so far. Let me finish up out of there. And this component right now has a minus sign in parentheses because it still has that rotational degree of freedom. But again, you see the concept. You are adding your mates at sort of the assembly level, and they're all sort of solved simultaneously for locating the components. Number two, copy with mates. And copy with mates is a lot like the repeat command in Creo Parametric or when you are assembling a component and you've got the temporary interfaces option turned on. Let me go to the drop down underneath insert components. Here we see copy with mates. I will click on the command and right now I'm being prompted to select the components to copy with their mates and I will select the one that I just picked. Let me rotate around to where I want it to go. Then I will use the little forward button and then now we will select the new references for each mate. So we have the concentric mate. Let me select another surface. And then for the coincident, it's actually the same surface. You can choose the repeat or I can just pick it manually again. And that way we have the component place. Let me hit the check mark. And now we can continue on with the process, assembling it multiple times. So copy with mates, that's another command that you will hear people using a lot. Number three, virtual components. In Creo Parametric, you can embed components in an assembly. You can also make an assembly inseparable. So that way you only have a single file that you are gonna manage, the assembly file, and all the components or some of the components are going to be located within that assembly file. Well, SOLIDWORKS has that as well. They've actually had it for quite a long time. If I right click on a component, here you see the make virtual command. And so that's how you can take that part and embed it into the assembly. Also, you can use different options so that when you are creating a brand new assembly, the components will be virtual by default. Number four, investigating external references. Here I have another assembly. Let me go to the top node in the model tree and I will right click on it. If you scroll down near the bottom, we have the external references command. So if your assembly does have external references, you can go into the dialog box. And this is how it looks for showing you the external references. You will see that the status for basically all of these uh, is that the external references are broken. But this is the command that you can use in assemblies for investigating your external references. Number five, operations with subassemblies. 
Let me select a subassembly over here. Actually, I will expand it for a moment to show you it has a number of different components located within it. If I right click on this subassembly, we have a bunch of commands in here. There is insert new subassembly, form new subassembly, and here we have one dissolve subassembly. And so this is a lot like the restructure command that you have in Creo Parametric for taking components from a subassembly and putting them at the top level of the assembly. But this one allows you to simply just dissolve the subassembly out of the model. And number six, in SOLIDWORKS in the ribbon, here we have a bill of materials command. So you can create a bill of materials essentially as a 3D object. So here we have the bill of materials property manager and you can see that we have a number of different options let me change this from top level only to parts only and everything else in here looks good let me hit the check mark and now it's prompting me that no current annotation view exists for this orientation please select or create an annotation view so i could create a new one here we have a drop down list i will choose the notes area and then ok and then just locate it here on the screen. So nice little function for creating a bill of materials as that 3D annotation. So there you have it, six different things to know about working with assemblies in SOLIDWORKS if you are coming from Creo Parametric.